You're watching Del Marva Life, and today we are getting into the game of golf. We're about to meet the master, okay? And this kid is 14 years old, and if you think your skills are on par with his, you're wrong, okay? This right here is Mike De Palma. He's from West Ocean City, and Mike is getting ready to compete in the drive, chip, and putt competition at the Masters. So, Mike, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about what this means to you. Like, this is a big competition. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I don't even really realize it yet. It's too big to comprehend. Yeah. But I feel like once I get there, I'll realize, like, this is awesome. But I still think this is crazy. It's a once in a lifetime, definitely. Absolutely. So how did this all come to be? So my parents, we kind of were watching it before mm -hmm. the Masters, obviously, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And my dad was like, you should totally do this. Just give it a try. There's nothing to lose. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's stupid. I'm never going to do that. And then after like two years of my dad's friends, my grandfather, my parents mm -hmm. trying to get me to do this, yeah. this is the last year I could possibly do it. So I was like, might as well give it a try after three years. Yeah. So I finally did it. And so you have obviously had a bunch of competitions kind of leading you up to this point, right? So kind of when did mm -hmm. it all start? So it started sometime probably May 27th. Mm -hmm. It was like a school day. Wow. And my dad said, perfect. There's not going to be a lot of people there. So you'll have a better chance to move on. So they sure. take the top three from there. Wow. Then I moved on to sometime in off. August, mm -hmm. I would say like August 15th. Okay. And that was in DuPont Country Club in Virginia, or no, in Wilmington. Okay. And so then they take the top two there. And then the fine, the regionals yeah. was in Oak Hill Country Club in Rochester, New York. Mm -hmm. And they take the winner and they move on to the Masters. So for the Masters, there will be a total of 10 people. Yeah, in my age group. You and nine other people in your age group. Mm -hmm. How many people? tried to get there? I would say probably 3,000, I would think. Wow. So the moment that you knew you were going to go, what were you thinking? <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I, I couldn't believe it, actually. Yeah. So I was the last age group to go that day. So there, there was a TV showing the scores. Mm -hmm. And there was three people left to go. Mm -hmm. And since we were the last people, they unplugged the TV. So I had no idea if I won, and when they were announcing the scores, I had no idea until they said my name, and I couldn't believe it. That is insane. And you kind of are just really perfecting your skills at golf, right? You kind of say you just got started getting more into it during quarantine, right? Yeah, probably a little bit before, but I kind of got into it because my dad's friends, they kind mm -hmm. of saw that I had talent, I guess. Yeah. And I just, I literally, I could not accept that because it was not my favorite sport at all. Really? Because golf is very slow and you have to have a lot of patience to play it. Yeah. And I was used to fast paced sports like soccer, basketball, lacrosse, and sure. I just couldn't wrap my mind around a four and a half hour round. And I couldn't, I just couldn't do it because it just took too long. Wow. And then I finally, as I matured, I realized, you know, it's good yeah. to somehow, to sometimes put four and a half hours aside to play golf. So the competition is drive, chip, and putt. Now of those three, what are you most confident in for yourself? That's a tough one. It kind of depends on the day. Sure. Sometimes you're feeling it with the drive. Uh -huh. Sometimes you really feel it with the putts. It just, it really depends. And then is there one that you're kind of a little more worried about? Probably putting, because everything, every green is different. Yeah. So you have to go there, readjust, because mm -hmm. It's very uncommon that one green you're like, okay, I know this green, and then you'll go to another course and be like, this is the same exact thing as your other course. It doesn't happen often. So that's why you spend most of the time on the putting green just to adjust. Because right. that's what putting is, just adjusting. Adjusting. Interesting. Now, who is the golfer that you look up to most, would you say? My dad and my grandfather. They, they got me into golf. Really? So it was it's pretty cool. They must be losing their minds that this is happening. They are. <laughs> they really are. My dad and my grandfather and my dad's friends, they uh -huh. are just, they're way more excited than I am because they, they actually know how big of a deal it is. Yeah. And I don't know. I just don't know yet. Yeah. I can't wrap my mind around that. That is absolutely incredible. And, and what about a famous golfer you look up to? I would say Brooks Kepka because mm -hmm. somebody at a local tournament here, one of the dads compared me to Brooks Kepka. 
because they just kind of, because Brooks Kepka, he doesn't watch golf at all. He just, just does it. Whatever happens, happens. He's just so confident in what he does. He doesn't have to watch it or just, you know, his life isn't all golf. Right. And I don't really watch golf at all. I can't just sit on a couch and watch golf for eight hours. I, I don't know. I can't do that. Yeah. It's all good. Well, um, can I call you Brooks now? Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I have to call you Brooks. Cool. Well, all right. So you're going to stick around because I want you to, I want you to teach me the ropes on, uh, okay. on putting here. Okay. So stick around. We're going to be right back. And uh, Mike or Brooks or Masters, as, he, as he's also called at his local golf course, he's going to stick around. You stick around. We're going to putt, putt, putt. Be right back. We're back here now with Mike De Palma, aka Brooks, aka Masters, aka an incredible golfer. And it's time we do some uh, putting practice, if okay. you will. And uh, Mike, we figured that we would give you the ultimate training because uh, the weather is not necessarily cooperating. So we want you to be prepared for wind, for rain. We want you to know how to uh, hit a ball into a coffee mug. You know? Never know so, when that'll come in handy, right? Well, that's just it. So uh, we're set up here. Also, I do have to do a little shout out to my husband for my golfing attire today. Thank you, Doc, for this, this. All right, so do you want to go first? Well, I think you should go first. Okay. And, and tell me a little bit about how to, how to get set up for a nice putt here. Well, it's hard to keep it steady on the concrete. Yeah. So, but you can tell it's going to go left to right. Why? Because the concrete's very slanted. Okay, okay, well, sure. If you really want to get in depth, you can bend down like a catcher, okay. but it's going to be super duper quick because it's concrete. So tell me about your stance for a sec. I mean, I just try to keep my feet shoulder width apart mm -hmm. and I like to, I don't know, my grandfather told me to keep the, to keep the ball oh. on my front foot because, and then my dad told me to keep it on the back foot. Oh, who do you listen to? My grandfather. <laughs> listen to my grandfather. Get it, Gramps. Okay. So, I missed, but. Oh, you close. hit it though. All right, that was good. That was good. Half a point, right? Half a point, exactly. All right. All right, here we go. Nice. But you can't... All right, here we go. i got to get this ball not to move. All right, here we go. So, I'm going to listen to Grandpa, too. I feel okay. Like, oops. I'm going to get my ball to be steady. It's got a mind of its own, doesn't it? It sure does. Okay. Perfect. All right, so here we go. This one's for Grandpa. Okay, shoulder width. Oh! Whoa, that was like a rub. That was so close. Wow! All right, grab this. I think we should do it. We should do it again. Okay. All right, let's. You're up. You're on a mission now. I'm on a mission. All right, I've got the I've got the master here, and I'm on a mission. <sighs> I thought you were gonna make it. You're so close. I was really close. Okay. It's hard to follow after it. Yeah. Oh, this is, it's this mug, so this close. mug is tough. All right, here we go. Let's try this again. This is tough, okay. Grandpa, go. Oh, oh, shoot. So close. All right, well, you know, this is the thing is, we're just trying to make this as hard as possible for you. Know, so apparently. that you can really get uh, prepared. So tell me when that competition, that's in April, right? It's April 3rd, mm -hmm. Sunday, right before the Masters. Right before the Masters. So you have a lot of time to prepare. I do. I have six months. Six months. Are you ready to train for six months? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, you've got to be. Well, cool. Well, thank you so much for, for coming out today. And, yeah, and no problem. Out. Question, do you ever do like mini golf to prepare? Because <laughs> that could be kind of fun. With my friends I do, because <gasps> they, they, they can spend 30 minutes, they can't spend four and a half hours. So yeah. we'll do that every once in a while, since we, most of my friends live in Ocean City, so. Cool, well you are incredible, and uh, we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Thanks for coming out today and braving the, uh, the elements <laughs> and uh, teaching me a thing or two about the sport of golf. I yeah. love it. Thank all you right. so much for having me. Absolutely.